Uh, how are you getting on, folks? Um, look, at, we're going to fly through these as best we can. Obviously, those who have seen the Leprous Town uh, tips will more than likely be watching Limerick straight after. My opinion, this is where it's either all going to go very, very right or very, very wrong. Um, to be bluntly honest with you, it's, it's on paper the best value um, horses of the day. Uh, prices ranging from four to six out to 20 to one, uh, two 20 to ones even. Uh, but it looks like it's going to be a very, very nice card. Um, again, very, very competitive racing, but some very, very nice horses in amongst the field. And, um, yeah, I think it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be a good day's racing. And I definitely think we are in with a very, very nice shot. Um, of turning around some very, very nice profit, providing uh, my race reading hasn't completely deteriorated uh, for the few months that I've been off. Anyway, look at, we'll crack on. Uh, first race off the 12.25. Look at Joseph O'Brien looks to have the hand in this one. Um, very, very nice run from Champion Green. Uh, first time out, it is four to seven. I would be inclined to sway from it. Um, instead, I'd be more inclined to go with the what looks to be the second choice, uh, getting a bit of weight from the favourite, obviously. But happy wife, happy life um, looks to be absolutely ideal for hurdles. Um, it was, look, at it's, it's generally... It's generally generally been a very very consistent flat horse for the three runs that has been running under. Um, obviously look at fifth on its debut, second last twice. Um, those were behind some fairly decent horses like obviously Minister of Magic. Um, we don't really know how good this horse can be, uh, but it won at fifty to one. Um, and obviously True Sten who happy wife happy life got the better of that particular day uh, managed to beat it um beat it on his next time out in Gorn park it generally looks like it's uh more of a soft soft heavy ground horse uh with a bit of the rain that we have been having i know look at it, it's been fairly mild um the last few days uh but leprestown have been watering the track and um it, all it takes is a bit of a downpour and uh, it, it it will really make the ground um, very, very heavy. Um, and look at at the moment, it, it is reading soft to heavy in Limerick anyway. So it would need to dry out an awful lot um, for me to go against happy wife, happy life here. It's three to one. Look, at it's it looks like it's Joseph O'Brien's second string, but as we've seen in in previous races like it 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 can happen where a second string can beat the first string um i think realistically it's between the those two i think it's going to be joseph o'brien's race to lose if either or can't win this i'd be very very shocked uh to be perfectly honest i can't see anything in here look i can't see anything in here but that's going to trouble them but at the same time an awful lot of these are unraced horses um so we don't really know what sort of capabilities they can have. But on terms of form, in terms of ground, in terms of potential likability to hurdles, I'd be inclined to sway with the second choice here uh, at three to one, as opposed to go all in for a, one, a four to seven favorite. Uh, 12.58. Again, I am... Um, I'm slightly concerned here because look at Willie Mullins has two horses here coming over from France. Um, it's hard to know what to make of either are. Um, like realistically, like we are going on hearsay, you could say. Um, but for me anyway, Percival Leg, uh, Legalois uh, put my French into good use here. Uh, currently priced at 11 to 4 uh, looks like it's got a very very nice hand here he handles heavy ground very very well uh, beaten Noble Burt Harakiri um, Modarina Old Soul Powerful Blue etc uh, Baron Akulia. why does that name ring a bell it was a winner over hurdles 
uh, in Wexford uh, two times and third last time out in Navin. So that form definitely does stand up. Um, obviously, look at Bern Barnacullia was well beaten that particular day, but has since come on and been able to win a race of some standard. Um, whether it's got the capabilities to really do well here or not, I don't know. Um, obviously, look at um, JP McManus being a Limerick man. He will want to have winners on his local track for Boxing Day. Whether it's going to be this one or the race before it, I don't know. I think, personally speaking, I think Percival Legalois uh, is more than likely going to... Um, put experience of racing against some very very good horses to the test whereas hen c and horse peace um we haven't really seen what they can do uh or we we haven't really been able to judge what they can do against some very very good horses we could with per uh percival legalois so my opinion 11 to 4 in this instance is a very very good price to take uh, for a horse that we know is good enough to win races and should be definitely look at it should definitely be there thereabouts if not go on and win it uh, next race then the 133 it's a fairly open it's a fairly open race look at uh, you tread daily tiger these two horses are coming in here as the main farm bearers but for me one that I, I, I've been following very, very closely. Um, a horse that I've been following very, very closely, but has tended to leave me with sore fingers um, after putting a nice little bit of money on him. Uh, he's just one of those horses that will run his heart out. And in theory, he is the best horse in this race, but he just has a tendency um, to... <sighs> tendency to throw the ties out of the pram to be perfectly honest um look at this wide open there's an awful lot of these that are coming in here um very well handicapped but one for me that i am really really liking and is actually going to be my nap of the day at 15 to 2 is exit to the west for robert tyner and ryan tracy um, this one put in an absolutely unbelievable performance over Chase and Fences last time out. That was in Punchestown in the 18-runner field uh, behind Glen Quinn Castle, who has been in absolutely outstanding form. Um, just calculating up the amount of wins it's put up. Uh, two, four, six, seven, seven wins in concession. This horse has put up and this exit to the West could get an, in with, within a length and a half of them. Uh, at 28 to 1 last time out. This horse is well, well able to, to, to race over hurdles. It's well able. It's put in some very, very good performance over hurdles before, uh, behind the likes of Classy K, uh, beating the likes of uh, Mr. Butler Stansfield. Very, very talented horse. Napoleon Blue, Swat Cowboy. Um, second then behind Hostage to Fortune. Uh, second behind. Moscow, so what? Second behind... Uh, ba, 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 ba. No, I'm gone wrong here now. Winner, um, ahead of Live Every Day, Parag O'Connor, Bally Adam Destiny, and uh, beating Lily Mon May, Diane Diva May uh, That was in a pint of pint, and uh, not really one that I know too much about, but um, overall... This horse is well, well capable of running a very, very big race here. 15 to 2 looks absolutely crazy. Um, it's at a weight that it can exploit. Um, 108 is very, very lenient. I, I definitely think this horse is well, well capable of putting in a very, very good performance and should definitely be there, thereabouts. 15 to 2 arguably is an each way uh betting price but i can't see a horse to beat this this very very talented mare um especially after the second last time out behind a very very capable sort and glen quinn glen quinn castle um look at the form speaks for itself glen quinn castle has been absolutely unbeatable and exit to the west has been able to get within a length and a half of them um realistically that form does stand up like a, a, a sore thumb in a, in a big crowd but 
Uh, 15 to 2 looks absolutely crazy. I'd be putting this horse at maybe around 5 to 1, 4 to 1 even. Uh, 15 to 2 is absolutely outst- outrageous. Um, but I'm definitely going to take it with open arms here. Now, next race off then to 240, and I'm going to be taking a bit of a chance here now. Obviously, look at Farouk Delen, Gabi Naku, Vanillier. They're all very, very talented horses. But the one that I'm really, really liking at an each-way price, Master Maxi at 25 to 1. Um, obviously, look at for Cork, the Corkery team with Ian Power on board. This horse has some absolutely outstanding form to its name. When you look at its second run over Hurdles, two and a half lengths behind appreciation in Cork at 50 to 1. Next time out, uh, it won in Cork uh, by eight and a half lengths, beating Atlantic Ferry, who has since uh, put up a listed form uh, over Hurdles. Uh, that was it was the next time out but it was the time after that um, Limpernion not really done a hell of a lot since uh, Elite Charbonnet uh, not done a hell of a lot since um, but look at overall um, actually Sweet Sweet Street um has won since as well, and that was well, well behind him that particular day. Look at it's a horse that can run a very, very big race. Uh, and here's another reason why C Ducker, five lengths behind Master McShee, uh, in Leperstown, um, that time before, uh, but, 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 and it ended up going to no, I'm gone wrong, I'm thinking of another Arthur Moore horse. Uh, I thought this was the horse that actually won the champion bumper over in Leperstown, or not Leperstown in Aintree that, that particular time is, it was the same colours obviously but uh, look at Sea Ducker is a very very talented horse as well um, put up two um, two very very good runs and um, two very good wins but um, I really really do like the, the look of this horse at 25 to 1 I think it's massively overpriced if you're having a bet, I'd be swaying towards the each way market, definitely, unless you have one in your head that's completely uh, solid. But it just looks to be a race where you're better off going for an each way play rather than um, rather than something like um, the likes of Vanilla at 7-2. Doesn't really look like this is going to be his... Um, his sort of trip, he stays all day. I can't see, I can't see him uh, last in the pace of two mile three. Gabby Naku looks to be a very, very nice horse, but realistically, is he, is he, is he more of a stayer? I think he is more of a stayer. And 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 two mile three, okay, arguably, yeah, in in soft to heavy ground is a staying trip, but I just think this is going to be a bit of a pace angle here and, and 25 to one for Master McShee. Oh my God. If this horse runs any sort of race at all, it's going to make me look like an absolute genius. But realistically, all it is just looking at form. There's no other horse in here that's ever been, been able to live with uh, appreciated, who is arguably one of the best hurdlers we have in this country at the moment. Um, I can't personally see any other horse in here that's going to be able to match the likes of appreciators, but Master Max Shee has done and has done with some very, very serious conviction. And 25 to 1, look at, I'm just leaving it there. I'm letting yourselves make the decision yourself, but you'd be very, very foolish to write him off. And I can guarantee you that, especially the third last time out, just shows the sort of form he has. I think he is absolutely massive, massive in this sort of race. 3.15 then, next race off. And again, we're going with an each way play. Earth's Furies for Eugene, or Eugene O'Sullivan and Jordan Canavan claiming seven pounds. Come on, Jordy, let's get at it. Um, obviously, look at second last time out. Very, very nice race. Uh, put in a very, very good performance. I really, really like the look of this horse. It's massively unexposed. I think... 
this could be the big break that Jordan Canavan has been waiting for. Um, I really, really do think it's going to be a very, very competitive race. And I definitely think it is going to be one of those races where it's going to need an awful lot of luck and running. But it's got, it, it's, it's just got one of those big races in him. And if he can produce it here today, it's going to be one of those, it's just going to be one of those things where it's going to be, um, it's, it's going to be a very, very hard horse to stop. Um, finally, then the last race of the day. Shortest price coming in here. Um, it's going to be very, very hard to go go against uh, Knockna C uh, for Willie Mullins and Jody Townend uh, for Blue Blood Racing. Actually, I have a photo, a lovely photo as well at that uh, sent to me from Blue Blood Racing. Um, I'm sorry, I don't have it here with me, but I'll I'll show you in the next time they have a runner. Um, it is it is a very very nice nice little touch to get at Christmas and for James Fenton and whoever else, Clerical Martin and uh, the rest of the team, basically, there's so many, so many of them in it, it's hard to keep track of them all, but I um, want to wish you the very, very best of luck with this one tomorrow. It definitely looks to be a very, very nice, nice opportunity here to get off the, get off the mark. Um, it's a very, very hard race to call. And it's just one of those things where there's so many unexposed horses and unraced horses that it could go any way. But look at Knockna C coming from Willie Mullins in a bumper. It's I know I contradicted myself in the Leperstown video, but I just can't look past it. And Jody Townend is is a very, very talented jockey claiming five pounds. It's a free five. It is a free five pounds. Um obviously, look at all you have to do is look what her brother has done. Um, champion jockey year after year after year, and and it's just one of those things where, um, I really really think this horse has got a very very nice nice big future ahead of uh, ahead of her, and uh, four to six not necessarily the greatest price of the world, but like I said in the Leperstown video, if you want to do cross the card double or treble or whatever it is like that, four to six is a lovely lovely price. It is a lovely, lovely price for a across the card double or treble or whatever way you're going to do it. Uh, but I'm going to leave it there. Obviously, look at, uh, like I said in the previous video, or for those who haven't heard the previous video, please make sure to keep liking, sharing, and subscribing. The very, very best of luck uh, to anyone who's following my Limerick tips uh, for Boxing Day or Stevens Day, whatever way you want to call it. Um, I really, really think this is going to be a very, very nice uh, opportunity here. Uh, to potentially take some very, very nice, nice amounts of money. Um, obviously, look at gamble very gamble responsibly. Don't go too mad or don't go too crazy with uh, your stake and plans for Boxing Day. It's, it's a day where there's an awful lot of racing on. I'm just basically putting up my opinions on the race and races in general. It doesn't necessarily mean that I've bets on myself, but if I was going betting on these particular races, these are the ones that I would be going with. Um, I'm going to leave the link in the description below for Patreon as well as uh, 10 euro a month to help support the Irish Racing Hour podcast but other than that I'm going to leave you and love you and we will upload this and get cracking on the down rail <laughs>